Hi, got another repair video. This is a GPS. One of those old school GPSs, you know, before we had those sh newfangled shoe phones uh, that have the GPS built in. You used to have a GPS like this, although I was a Garmin E-Trex man. I was an E-Trex yellow man. Um, still am. This doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my brother-in-law, Phil. You've seen him on the uh, channel before. And uh, his um, GPS here is effectively known as Madge. So hi and say hi to Madge. And of course, this was used... Um, <laughs> crusty, isn't it? And this is used back in the old school days of geocaching. I'll link in a video um, with some geocaching uh, stuff if you haven't uh, seen that before, showing like a 23 year old geocache that I placed uh, donkeys years ago. But um, yeah, apparently um, this one, it, it doesn't work. So let's have a look. Yes, that is super, super, super duper crusty. So uh, yeah, we take it apart and... Wah, 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 wah. We have the uh, magic crystalline solution here, from our, uh, obviously from an alkaline leak. Look at that. And if we have a look down in here, oh, geez, that's, that's not pretty, is it? Oh, that screw down there. That's terrible, Muriel. <laughs> Looks like the PCB ends here, though. Um, so, yeah, but look. Yeah, we've leaked onto that terminal. So these are the two terminals. These ones over here, yeah, look at that, damn. Um, these ones over here are just linking across. Uh, so, three volt um, source on this thing. Does that, is there any of the spring eaten away? We won't know until we open it up, but uh, yeah, we need to get some, need to get some vinegar on that and uh, see. But anyway, I've put some uh, batteries in it and it doesn't seem to uh, work at all. So I think best thing to do, uh, first port of call is to uh, get it apart and clean this sucker. Alright, oh that just pops right open, and we're in, nice o-ring seal around that, okay, that's neat, we've got a uh, bare wire interface going over to our um, serial port on the back, and that would have been the way you get data in and out of this thing, because you could use um, some old school programs like a uh, geocaching swiss army knife for example gsac back in the day this is still going i don't know um don't do that much geocaching these days anyway um oh there's our little uh, helical antenna there it is that's great so uh the board there is a secondary board down here is that just a battery board that could be good if it is uh means you can take that out Whoa, oh, 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 what the, oh, yeah, well, there's your problem, um, yeah, actually, the bottom, the bottom on those springs looks okay, so if we clean up that spring, we might be okay, but yeah, down, no wonder we're getting no power, look at that, oh, oh, look at the, look at this jumper over here, oh, no, and down on the board, oh geez, oh is that, it's not looking good is it? That tiny little trace there, has that been eaten away? Oh, oh I'm not liking it. It's got a built-in card, is that for like maps and stuff? I, I can't remember this particular model, because uh, I wasn't a uh, Magellan man, although at the time I was working at Around about, you know, to the peak of, you know, the geocaching, the early geocaching days in the early 2000s, uh, I was working at um, Tally's at the time, and Tally's actually owned Magellan. So I could have actually got um, staff discounts on Magellan GPS products. <laughs> I, I remember, and, and they owned um, Thompson as well. Um, so I got a uh, Thompson TV. I got a staff discount on a Thompson TV. <laughs> so staff, you know, like a company, you know, because they're a big global company owns a ton of stuff. They own Thompson, they own Magellan as well. Um, so yeah, I think they're offering deals on the Magellan uh, GPSs. And I got a big Thompson CRT TV, it was a big widescreen jobby, CRT, oh, it was brilliant. Um, but yeah, that, that was, uh, back then the only choice was like gigantic CRT thing, widescreen CRT or a plasma. And like plasmas were like massive and failure prone and like, yeah, they were just like, and very expensive. So yeah, I got a good deal on someone. 
went for the <laughs> went for the uh, Thompson widescreen TV. But anyway, um, a bounce cap. What is a bounce cap? Do we bounce it? What do we do? It's a cap there for bouncing. <laughs> if you have any idea what a bounce cap is, leave it in the comments down below. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's maybe the 5 volt rail there. Um, and anyway, we're talking 2001. So, geez, we're talking like you know, 24 years old now. Unbelievable. So this is the Meridium Platinum. There you go. So, yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff over there. But I think that board might be okay. But we're probably going to have to go and get it out and check the bottom side of it. But, yeah, look at all those beautiful crystals. Oh, for you crystal aficionados. There you go. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. They're the contact pads. <laughs> so no wonder this thing wasn't working. Oh, that's just wonderful. So if you don't know what these crystals are, these are formed by the leaking uh, potassium hydroxide in alkaline batteries. That's the actual liquid that leaks out. And then uh, that combines with CO2 in the atmosphere um, to form uh, potassium carbonate. So these are potassium carbonate crystals. So these will um, be neutralized by adding a, um, a mild acid like uh, vinegar, like white vinegar, um, to them. So they'll start to bubble and everything um, until they're neutralized. So if I put a tiny dab of white vinegar on that, we'll see that's going to start bubbling. And you can see there's also some on that uh, screw, poor screw as well. And that will neutralize nicely on that other contact over there. There you go. Like, I need to do it a bit better. I need to get this board out, but I just wanted to show you. There you go. That's what happens. And that will neutralize it so it'll stop corroding anything else. And should also be exactly the same in the lid here. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Bobby Dazzler. Chemistry at work. Potassium carbonate crystals formed by the potassium hydroxide. And, uh, yep. There you go. So I have some white vinegar handy. And we get those four screws out there. The whole shebang's going to come out. So there's their uh, their board to board interconnects. So I should probably be using gloves here, but, uh, Ah, well, she'll be right. So there's our battery board, and flippity doo da. Oh, oh, look at the uh, discoloring on the, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go, discoloring on the LCD there. That's not terrific, is it? There's the bottom, bottom of that board. That actually looks okay, doesn't it? Which side did it leak at? You can see that the vias there, they're uh, not too healthy, but... We should be able to clean that up. As you can see, the other vias up this end, they're all nice and clear. These ones look like they're clogged up with some calcium carbonate there, so it's not terrific. So yeah, you want to go in there and uh, clean all that with some vinegar. And uh, make sure you get rid of the vinegar at the end, by the way, because um, you don't want to leave a little mild acid on your PCB. That can be just as bad as your calcium carbonate. Oh, look at the button. Oh, and the reverse side. Of the battery board is the buttons. Oh boy, look at that. Oh, oh that's terrible, Muriel. Uh, we can we can take that off, but oh, oh my, oh my, yeah, that's not terrific, is it? <laughs> that's like delaminated. Oh boy, no. Nah, the further we go in here, the worse the worse this thing gets. I'm afraid. So we can actually pull away all that. Oh man. So that's that's not conductive. So technically, you don't really need it. Um, you're only looking at the contacts on the board and the conductive rubber baby buggy bumpers on the bottom there. They're fine. So as long as you can clean up that, um, yeah, you really don't need this, that insulated uh, sheet back there, really. Actually, what, what is that? There's two pads. No, this, why has it got pads on there? What is that? What is that doing? I don't know what that's doing. 
Yeah, these were conductive pads. Um, like, what? So what is that doing? I don't, I don't understand. Why, why would you bother having that? Um, because these are, these are dual contact. Oh, is that eaten away entirely there? Ah, oh, this could be eaten away entirely. I think we've come, oh, yeah, oh, look. Wow, there's at least one trace there eaten away entirely. Oh, yeah, I don't like the idea of repairing this, given that's a 25-year-old GPS. Yeah, yeah, this board, look at that. Look, oh, that V is just horrible. I mean, like, you know, if you were desperate enough, you could repair, yeah, another track eaten away here, here. That V is, is that V a completely gone? Oh, no, no, okay. I, I had hope that, this was repairable, but I mean, technically it is, if you were desperate, if it was some, you know, um, like really valuable, um, I'm sure it's valuable to fill, but you know, <laughs> um, like if it was some really valuable, like, uh, you know, a bit of vintage, um, you know, computer or electronics or something like that, you know, that you really, you know, desperately wanted to get going because they're quite rare, then yeah, yeah, you would put the effort into repairing that, but otherwise, no, no, I'm sorry, and if we peel off that, we might find that there's worse to come under there as well, so I think this Meridium Platinum is, uh, it's gone the way of the Dodo, so I don't <laughs> think I'm going to spend any more time on that, it's just, oh, it looked promising at first, I thought, you know, I could clean up those contacts, no worries, you know, and, and clean up the pins and stuff and the and the headers over here for the pins and Bob's your uncle but no no Bob is literally my uncle um but it's just not worth the effort um sorry Phil <laughs> Madge is dead <laughs> F in the chat for Madge <sighs> catch you next time